grocery stores and buy their food. While many complain about the high price of food, little do they know that there is a Jewish tax that they have paid when purchasing most of their food, as some who dislike Jews argue. According to some non-Jews, this reported Jewish tax is paid on nearly all prepackaged food items and is often signified by the capital letter K within a circle, or the letter U within a circle in the U.S., although there are approximately 400 other Jewish organizations who may use different symbols, with some of the symbols now shown. By displaying these symbols, this means that the food is in fact kosher, and that the company has paid a fee to rabbis. Yearly, these fees from various Jewish organizations appear to be quite significant. Additional costs are made by having to purchase supplies from other kosher shops, such as kosher flour for a prepackaged kosher cake mix, and from some suppliers having to handle kosher food in a different manner, although there appears to be no health benefits obtained from such. The Jewish ADL, that is the Anti-Defamation League of B'nai Brit, an exclusively Jewish organization, say that such accusations are merely a bizarre claim by right-wing extremists. They suggest that rabbis are not making millions of dollars from this matter, and it is merely used as propaganda by people who dislike Jews. In one of the ADL's articles, they repeatedly assure readers that no Jews are getting wealthy from this, and that the costs are so minuscule that they can hardly even be measured. According to the April 5, 2001, online edition of the Detroit News, over 150 billion in food products had a portion of their costs go to rabbis. The Orthodox Union, which uses the U symbol, reportedly makes over 20 million dollars a year. This is quite a sum, particularly considering that there are said to be over 275 other Jewish organizations that also certified food as kosher in the US and 400 such organizations around the globe. Just two years after the article appeared in the Detroit News on July 1, 2003, eBiz Asia reported that the global kosher tax was now on $165 billion worth of goods, which was up $45 billion in 1996 and up from $250 million worth of food 25 years ago. Most likely these fees have increased even more since the article appeared. The Jewish Anti-Defamation League of B'nai B'rith has said in the past that Heinz's costs were very little. In fact, according to the ADL, Heinz's costs were so small we can't even calculate it. Contrary to the ADL's assertion, on March 20, 2003, the Canadian Jewish News reported that Heinz in Canada was getting rid of its kosher certification on some but not all, products due to the reported extra costs associated with kosher certification. This was done to keep costs down. A spokesperson for Heinz said that the decision was based on both savings and how complex the manufacturing process is. The US government seems to encourage such affairs. In fact, contradicting separation of church and state, the government has issued the GAIN report about selling kosher food abroad. Despite this cost to non-Jewish consumers, some argue, seldom, if ever, do Jews disclose the real meaning of these symbols to buyers. In Canada, the symbol COR for Congress of Orthodox Rabbis is used, which some feel is misleading. Dr. Lubomir Potolak, a retired Canadian psychology professor who is not anti-Semitic at all, has suggested that Jews should have a Star of David on the products so non-Jewish consumers know that they are in fact paying a Jewish tax. This would seem a bit more honest in their approach. Many people are vehemently against the Israeli occupation of the Mideast, yet these same people are paying for it to occur via the rabbinical kosher excise tax. Little do some non-Jews, even Arabs, realize that they may be helping subsidize Israel's wall of separation that goes through Palestinian neighborhoods by simply buying their food. Even if the sum of the money from the rabbinical kosher excise tax does not go to Israel directly, it certainly eases up other monies that can be then earmarked for such.
Some non-Jews feel that these fees are an unfair burden to non-Jews, since it is non-Jews who pay the greater portion of the fees. The number of Jewish consumers does not affect the costs in most cases, and there is no evidence to indicate that this is the case. Jews are roughly 2% of America's population, and those who eat only kosher foods probably account for half a percent, mostly during religious observances. Some smaller companies have done away with the Jewish tax after discovering that it didn't help business. Today you will see kosher certification noting that such fees have been paid on most prepackaged food products, from pancake mix to crackers to lasagna noodles to ketchup, mustard, tomato juice and so forth. Tens of thousands of products now have this kosher tax. This kosher tax is not just on food products. In fact, nowadays you hear about kosher aluminium foil, kosher wax paper, and kosher plastic wrap. There are now kosher cleaning products, which you certainly don't eat either. There is kosher water. There is even kosher steel nowadays. In Jewish publications, it is made clearly known what is kosher. However, as some people have pointed out in Gentile publications, evidence that a kosher tax is to be paid is deliberately hidden. In this ad for Dolby Pads, the kosher certification was brushed out deliberately. You'll never see an ad like this old one from Heinz Beans in a non-Jewish publication. Why is this if there is nothing to hide? Today it seems that these kosher taxes tend to affect all consumer items. One honest Jewish publication of the past has aptly labeled this massive unfair rabbinical kosher excise tax as the kosher racket. As noted previously, there have been kosher taxes paid on 165 billion in food products in the US in 2003, with just one organization receiving well over 20 million dollars. Overall, according to the Albuquerque Tribune of July 29, 2002, costs are roughly six billion for kosher certification or roughly one dollar for every thirty dollars spent on kosher certified products. Considering that non-Jews presumably consume at least 98 percent of kosher products with respect to the population and therefore pay 98 percent of the costs, many non-Jews argue that it seems an excessive and unnecessary fee. If Jews wish to pay for their certification and the extra costs associated with that, most non-Jews see no problem. But that's not the case, as Jews seem to expect non-Jews to pay their bills and then scream anti-Semite where non-Jew opposes this. If Jews grow up being taught about this rabbinical kosher excise tax and realize that non-Jews pay the brunt of the expense unknowingly, why have no Jews opposed this? It is obviously that many Gentiles who know of this do not speak up. They are afraid of being said they promote anti-Semitism.